In this video, we'll be looking at the Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect, the main 3D printer we use at the Idea Lab. We'll look at loading and unloading filament reels, selecting a print, and what to look out for while your print is in progress. We don't expect you to be entirely self-sufficient on our 3D printers right away. We will always have staff on hand to help or answer questions. The intention of this video is to give you a brief overview and to let you know what to expect when you use our 3D printers. This is the Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect. On the front, you can see the touch panel that is used for operating the printer, as well as the USB slot to place the drive containing your 3D design. Inside the printer, you can see the print head that contains the nozzle, which heats up and extrudes the melted filament. Below is the glass print bed that heats up during printing. When you begin a print, the print bed will raise to meet the nozzle. The print bed then lowers as each layer is printed. At the back of the printer is where the filament spool is loaded, as well as the feeder that sends filament through the tube to the hot end. We typically turn on our 3D printers at the start of each day, but in case the 3D printer is turned off, you simply turn it on with the power switch at the back. Please note that the startup procedure can take a few minutes, so budget some time to let it boot up. Once the printer is operational, you will need to load a filament spool. This is an easy process on the Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect. However, it does take a few minutes, especially if you are swapping spools. So remember to budget a few minutes in your booking time to do this. Go to the touch panel on the front of the printer and press the spool icon. This brings up some options. If the printer is empty, you will select the load material option. If there's already a spool on the printer, but you want to switch colors, you will need to select the Change Material option. In this case, we'll select Load Material as the printer is currently empty. We keep our filament spools in Ziploc bags containing silica packets, as PLA filament is particularly susceptible to humidity and moisture. Take the spool out and make sure there is a neat end on it, preferably with a slight slant cut into it. Feel free to use our side cutter tool to snip the end of the filament. When you are ready to begin, select Start Loading Material. Confirm that it is PLA material that you are using. The nozzle will begin heating. It only takes about 60 seconds to heat up. Once the optimal temperature has been reached, you will be prompted to load the filament. While the nozzle is heating, Go to the back of the printer and load the filament spool with the tail coming out underneath, pointing towards the feeder. Follow the instructions on the touchscreen. Make sure the latch is open on the feeder and insert the end of the filament. Push the filament all the way through to the feeder until you see some extrude from the nozzle. Then close the latch on the feeder. Now press the Material Loaded button on screen. The feeder will then begin pushing filament through the hot end, and you will see it emerge from the nozzle. We tend to take off the front cover and let the material extrude for 40 to 50 centimeters. If the previous filament being used on the printer was a different color, you need to wait for the extruded filament to change to your chosen color. When you are confident that the material is flowing freely, Press Material is Extruding on the touchscreen. Click Skip Cooldown as we are about to select our design for printing. To load your design for printing, insert your USB drive and press the Select from USB option on screen. Scroll through the list of designs until you see the one you want to print. Select the design file.
The print will start immediately. You'll be prompted with a message that the print is being prepared. The nozzle may already be hot if you have recently loaded the filament, but the print bed will need to come up to temperature. Although the print bed does not reach as high temperature as the nozzle, it takes longer to heat up because of its larger surface area. When the hot end and print bed reach their optimal temperature, the print bed will rise and the printer will extrude a blob of filament in the left hand corner of the print bed. This ensures the filament is running freely. The carriage will move to the center of the print bed and the printer will begin the print, starting with the adhesion support. This design had the skirt option selected in Cura, so there will be a perimeter laid around the print before the object itself is printed. This helps get the filament flowing. It is also an early indicator for issues. For example, if the size of the print was not what you were originally anticipating. It is a good idea to wash the first layer as it goes down. If there are big spaces between filament lines, it may mean the print bed is too far from the nozzle. If the layer is thin or semi-transparent, or the nozzle tracks through it, it may mean the nozzle is too close. If you spot either of these scenarios, please let the Ideal Lab staff know and they can recalibrate the print bed. Always watch for the first few minutes of your print as many issues will be obvious in the first few layers. Once you are confident that the print is going well, you can check on it every five to 10 minutes. When you check in on your print, it's also a good idea to look at it through the front opening of the 3D printer as you will be able to spot if the printer has stopped extruding. If an error like this occurs, it is often hard to detect when looking at the print from above. When a print is complete, the print bed will lower. There will be an on-screen warning to wait until the nozzle and bed have completely cooled before removing the print. Waiting until the printer cools is the best way to ensure both your personal safety and a successful print. When the printer is cooled, use our thin spatula to help remove the print. Please be careful as the edges of these tools can be very, very sharp. If you added supports or adhesion layers, these also need to be removed. Supports and brims often tear away without the need for tools. However, if there is residual material left on a print, we have a variety of tools and files to help clean and clear the surfaces. Thanks for watching this introductory overview on using the Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect. As a reminder, we will always have staff on hand to help or answer questions. If you encounter any problems while using the Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect, please don't hesitate to speak to a member of staff.